but faith located it because a woman generated it in herself mind so therefore I'm saying to you as we go on what I've been saying for the past few minutes is in these seven days deal with your mind you know all the loss of flesh is from the mind adultery is from the mind fornication is from the mind it begins in the mind you look and thought generates you develop the thoughts it gets into your heart masturbation is from the mind um, uh, pornography is from the mind um, you know now what, what Satan is using seriously to attack children and to put demons in them games if you have a child and you think that games is what will make that child intelligent and you always pump games to the child you'll be shocked that that child will be duller you'll be a dull person a dull brain you consider these you and I are intelligent and our parents did not let us play any game the game they would buy for you when you were young all of you that are adults we bought games when we were raising you and the games is time stable scientific things they are educative things jigsaw puzzle to teach you on spelling those are the games you play no wonder you came up with distinctions and your brain is acute imagine a child who is given this game if you think that your child will become rich by a game they can just deceive you it is not for game that God sent you to the world anyone given to game from childhood can never be serious with God when they grow up because their brain is game the spirit of game will possess them they will game out everything when you raise your children if your mind tells you to buy them games if the games are not educative that will teach them math and English which is the poorest areas that many use a problem with now math English and science every child if it's not something that will introduce them to math and science and you pump them with game of people fighting rolling as a man thinking in his heart you will give back to children who will grow and become violent prayer can heal help them because by the time you are conscious of it they have been it has been endemic in them the Bible says train your child in the way you should go and when he grows up he will not depart from it so you are guilty of that instruction of God and the sanction is terrible because in your old age you have a child who is just a gamer even things of the spirit cannot attract that child because that child was ready to play game similarly those of you who always felt that oh you can watch bad films on television and your children are watching it with you by the time the devil possess them is the time you want them to study their books when they carry book what happened to children like that they sleep when you put on those useless films they wake up they can watch it in the morning because you did it too and they followed you and you imagine how you could wreck the future of your children man. all these things are tricks of the devil sent out to walk to human mind oh the child i've been reading he needs rest why didn't he rest on the scriptures the story of samson the story of solomon the story of daniel shadrach meshach abednego why didn't he use that for us that it is games it is film of devils acting that a christian family will commit themselves to relaxing with don't you know that every actor has a director who inspired their brain to the act as in the church we have a director he's speaking through me right because I haven't brought any, any topic to come and teach you. So are those who act. They have their director inside them who make them 
act those ways. Don't you see those who dance when those uh, evangelists of Satan are, are singing? The way they twist their bodies? You think it's normal? You try it, you'll break your bones. Until you are adapted to the demon that twists their body. Yes. But then if you now watch those ones as a spirit work, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And before we pray, let me refer you to that now. Why is Holy Spirit speaking about your mind? Because of what we read every day, Psalm 24. Let's read verse 5 together of Psalm 24. Let's read from verse 4. Who will? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Then the next verse says, Let's read from verse 3. Stop. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? I think that's why we started our discussion. And who will stand in his holy place? What do you go to the hill of the Lord to see? God, face to face. What do you go to the holy place to see? God in our face to face. That's the reason why the holy place is not a place accessible to everybody until Jesus died. And the curtain was rendered open. So if you want to ascend to the hill of the Lord or stand in his holy place, if you want to be in a position to see vision and trance, to be used by God, to be intelligent and increase in the knowledge of your, your career or, or God, to be very skillful and increase in skill, innovator of skills daily, increasingly, to be a mouthpiece of God, and your word will not fall to the ground. To have encounters of angels rather than demons pursuing you all over your dream. To be free from the past of Satan and be a devil boss. To walk in the midst of spirits of hell and they run from you. To be surrounded by people who are caught and they are all fidgeting before you. And the same people are dangerous to other people. They can afflict them and spell them. But when it comes to you, they'll be afraid to even come near you. For you to be able to do that is only one way. That is the heel of the law, standing on the heel of the law. They can plot against anybody in the office. If anybody dare you, they'll finish. For you to be in that position, when it's time for promotion, you'll be the first to be considered. Nobody will be able to stop your progress or hinder you from reaching the high. For you to be in that place, you must have what? Clean hands, verse 4. Clean hands and a pure heart. And the, all what I've treated tonight is to keep your heart in purity. So that your heart will not be defiled. The tool to develop a pure heart is what I've just given you. It's very easy. Really, is the easiest way for life. He doesn't need more sacrifice. He only needs obedience. Am I talking to you? That's the way that seemed right to man, but he needs destruction. And the Bible says you cannot get to that top, no matter how much you fast. You cannot get to that top, no matter how much you pray. Because the prayer of the wicked will not be answered by the Most High. But anyone who desires God must refrain from sin. You must refrain from evil thoughts. You must overcome evil thoughts by good. <clears throat> so, your hands must be clean. You must not base your conviction about people because of your thought. <clears throat> if you're around me, you have major a lot of problems. If you're around me and you just say anything from your thought, instantly I, 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 I'll stop. No, my wife can't, my children can't, nobody can. Oh, I think this is, why do you think? Tell me the basis of your thought. Who informed that thought? You will explain it to me immediately. You will explain it to me immediately. So that your attitude towards people is not by suspicion. You must, the Bible says you must not interpret omen. 
Am I talking to you? If you do what I say, you will see. You will hear. You will know. If you do what I say, many things that have been stagnant in your life, before these seven days is over, there will be a move and a shift in your life. Amen. What profits you to stay on your bed and begin to think about somebody who offended you in the day? Do you think that is from God? It's from the devil who wants to steal from you. Because it does not profit you to think about offense of other people. Because the Bible says that whoever does not forgive the sins of others will not be forgiven by my Father. They don't just play you into the hands of God. Sword of God, I mean. Am I talking to you? Huh. Your hands must be clean. You must not shed the blood of innocence by assassinating them behind them, their character. Backbiting, they must not find you there. The ways of sinners, you must not be there. The counsel of the wicked must not be your attractive place of abode. How am I talking to you? Fear should not have place in your heart. Because what? Greater is he that is in me than he that is. It doesn't matter how my body feels. What matters is how I feel. Amen. My soul feel good. My body may be sick. My soul cannot be sick. Hallelujah, somebody. Everything that attacks your body have a expiry date. Have you, doctor? Every sickness, they have a expiry date. The one that refuses to expire, you will expire him by force. You know what? Paul said, and you read it recently, after he went to heaven and saw paradise, and saw what mortal men had not been told, he said, when I came back, God assigned a messenger against my body. Humble me. For the level of revelation God gave him, God assigned a spirit to torment him once a while so that he would remember he's still a man and not a God. You know, when I read that, I, I, be, I fear God. I fear God. He said, three times I asked the Lord, take this torment away from me. And the Lord said, my grace. You know something with God, if he tell you one thing, 10 years, if you question him again, he will repeat what he said to you 10 years ago. That's how God is. He doesn't talk too much. I think all of us need to emulate that, Father. That we don't just talk too much. You know? So, if that sickness in your body refuses to go after you have exercised your faith, he has a spirit day. The day you are going to leave the body, you leave the body with him in the grave that will bury that sickness in the grave. That's the day he expired. Because you just leave that body for him, the rest of you and the body, your sickness, they will bury you forever. I come out of the body, I'm gone to my maker. So why do you bother about it? Why do you bother about it? So clean hands and pure heart. Pure heart is very simple. It's just the component of what, what I've been teaching you. Who does not lift up his soul to what is false? Or swear deceitfully. I love the word deceitfully. He does not lift his soul to what is false, nor swear deceitfully. Material things does not rule over you. Let me say this to you before we go and pray. I didn't even look at this one. You, didn't, you did not also. Both of us are guilty. I didn't look at this one. You didn't tell me that. Apostle, you know, <laughs> look at your this one because we're going to pray. But let me say this to you. You know, Satan is at large in the church. A Roman Catholic church. You heard about the scandals of uh, some priests who were uh, acting pedophilia stuff against boys, isn't it? It's the devil that stepped in there. You heard the Anglican church now. Some people say that they have started gay bishop, gay this and stuff. That is Satan attack Anglican. What about Pentecostal? Is Pentecostal just free? You know what Pentecostal church Satan attacked them? The spirit of mammon. Prosperity, prosperity, prosperity to the place where the majority of those who are Pentecostal believe that God is prosperity. If you don't have money, you don't have God. I don't worship. 
if you have a particular way you dress and you come to the place that if you don't put on those cosmetics and dressing you don't feel okay then satan has given you an idol am i talking to you you know there are occasions you know when women do wedding they put that shiny nose on them something something that shines it has several colors silver huh? glitters where is a woman are you a woman <laughs> yes you may know it maybe you have bought it you bought it to your wife or your wife when you were doing your wedding she didn't she didn't wear so so you know they look good when they flint their faces with that something something shiny Abby? they call it glitter glitter why looking at me you call it glitter let me go to the young girls Joe. the young ladies who tell me tell me tell me these guys are they are old school tell me what they highlighter highlight are you a woman tell me baby you are men so why, why are you telling me what according to the woman so you are you are trying to echo her voice and what do you call it? Highlight. Okay, highlight. Highlighter. Highlighter. Yeah, I really highlight them. And so, you know, when you are going for a wedding and the, the wife, you know, put all those things. And then they have a veil, they cover their face. Isn't it? And they wear a white, all of them want to wear a white gown. Hmm? Even the one not supposed to wear it, we wear it that day. <laughs> Because white gown is for virgins, I know that, and cream is for anyone this virgin. Anyway, they wear this white gown and the trail will go and some people are carrying the white gown for them. And they too, <laughs> they don't frown on that, they, they are smiling, <laughs> carry the bag and they are going like that. Can you imagine next Sunday, the, 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 the wife of last Saturday came to service like that. Hmm? If it comes like that, and then the next Sunday she came again, she wore those things and she's coming to this church with those uh, uh, white something. Somebody will say something is wrong with her, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? So if you have a particular thing that you put on yourself in the facial look or world stuff and that, and you have to change the style and you think, no, 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 I'm not complete. Be careful whether your fashion has become your God. Oh, if I don't paint on my nail and have, you know, some fingernails, they, they, they are so long to the extent that when they want to type, they will type in the wrong alphabet because the nail, the, the nail is a protector against the, the, the iPad. And they were using nail to try to do boom, boom, boom. An iPad doesn't understand nail. You have to put your finger, you know? And you see them now beginning to struggle to type. You know, then that is that is suspicious. Somebody is sick in the in the upstairs there. Am I talking to you? Well, well I mean, if other girls just do their nail normal and then they type the type, and you now you are typing like this, the nail is so, even some of the nail they will go concave <laughs> more than the one of a lion, man. And you can find them on the altar too with my micro microphone doing their hand like this. They are like this. <laughs> Say, oh Lord my God. <laughs> they are really in awesome wonder. <laughs> because the, the microphone will fall down and they can't pick it up. <laughs> if they are, you know, if it falls from their hand, they have to use two hands to pick it. Because one hand is so, <clears throat> it's so, it's so, so, the nails are so long, you know, that they need the assistance of <laughs> carry it like this. And you know the song that we sing now, you know, um, uh, and the moment I'm away, till I lay my head, I will sing. Oh, that goodness. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
<laughs> Come on, let's be sensible Pentecostal people. Am I talking to you? And then wear torn jeans to go and worship Holy God, who is the richest in his palace. Come before him with torn jeans. Of all jeans that have sense, the one that is torn, that have no sense. You know, when you see a Christian doing senseless things, there's a spirit behind it. What does the spirit do? You will pray, cry. <laughs> you know, they can't clean their face because of the things too much there. So when they cry, they didn't know this. In weddings, you see them. <laughs> Amen. And the Lord is looking at them. Oh, my children. Oh, my children. Who oh, will help this one now? <laughs> Let me tell you this to you. Those things you must be careful about. John says that at this sin. For you to ask that, you knew they were sin. Because, I mean, if you don't, if something is not a sin, you won't ask that, is it a sin? Am I talking to you? Anything that you do that rules your life, be careful about them. For Pentecostal churches, materialism is what Satan gives Pentecostal. Oh, we don't believe in homosexual, and so you are not different from the one who even have bishop homosexual. Because you also have a God given you. But you know, you have to listen to me. God raised you to bring order into Pentecostal movement. These are the things that hinder believers from operating power of God. I will talk, 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 talk. They argue with us about Jesus because we do not have manifestation to demonstrate what we are saying. All these things that clog our mind in seven days, we must throw them away. Yeah. You and I are settled that as for me and me, the Lord shall we serve. We will not allow Satan to say shame on God anymore. Because everyone that God raised, Satan soon pollute them. I made up my mind because I've known the secret of life. You know, when I was praying for you, I said, Lord, if the whole world decide to turn away from you, CFT will not put you to shame. You need to understand my voice. It is not what we are now that matters, but what will become of us. What no eyes have seen, no mind has conceived. God prepared for Christ's faith tabernacle who love him because you love God. You love God. Am I talking to you? So if you love God, talk God, dress God, look God. Isn't it? And we're going to pray now. First Corinthians 2.16. Let's stand up together and read it. Shall we? For who has known? Read it again. Now I'm beginning to pray and declare, Lord, I have the mind of Christ. I command my mind to submit, to submit. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. <clears throat> By the mind of Christ in me, Lord, I speak to my human mind. I command my mind to submit to the mind of Christ. I command my mind to submit to the mind of Christ. Tell the Lord, send your fire into my human mind. Everything that is not of God, take them out of me. 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 
anything that is not of God. The least of you will become a thousand. And the smallest a mighty nation. As it is written, see, the Lord has chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hor, of the tribe of Judah, and he has filled him with the Spirit of God. I say to you, God has chosen you, Christ faith tabernacle, and has filled you with the Spirit of God, with skill, with ability, with knowledge of all kinds of crafts. I speak to your soul Amen. as it is written the woman gave birth to a boy and named him Samson he grew and the Lord blessed him and the spirit of the Lord began to stir him up the Lord bless you Amen. in this season the blessing of God upon you will begin to stir your spirit up so that the area of focus that God wants you to prosper, you begin to focus into it. God will change your dream to encounters. When you are walking, you will hear the voice behind you say to you, this is the way. Every form of frustra frustration are taken away. By prophet, the Lord led Israel out of Egypt. By prophet, they enter Canaan. You have been led out by prophet out of the world. I prophesy to you, therefore, enter your Canaan. Leave your battle now. Amen. Go into your Canaan now. Amen. Everything you lay your hands on will prosper. Amen. According to the voice of heaven that speak eternal word, I speak upon your life. Your children shall live in the presence of God. Amen. It is a mandate of heaven to prosper the children of the righteous. Because I'm your spiritual father, I say, you are blessed. Amen. And because you are righteous, your children are blessed. Amen. I say the powers of this age will not be able to shipwreck you. Amen. As the Lord had given me strength to keep on firing, you will never be tired. Amen. You will never be weary. Amen. Resilience that defile every all. Receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Every sickness sent to attack our body, we put them to death in the name of Jesus. I bring every member of CRT to the clinic in heaven for examination. Anyone that needs a spare part, receive it in the name of Jesus. Kidney, liver, heart, blood system, receive brand new ones. Bones and tendons and cartilages, receive brand new ones. Father, we bring everyone of this house, also all over, everyone connected to this, to, to, to this prayer line. We bring them and massage them before your clinic, Lord Jesus, one after the other through the history of the blood of the Lamb, that the covenant of healing be fulfilled. Amen. That the covenant of healing be made manifest. Amen. For the prosperity that you are provided, your people need good health to enjoy it. Amen. So you receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because it's done. Thank you for this day. In Jesus' holy and anointed name we pray. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Put your hands together for the living God. Hallelujah.